This is Bad Brad Armstrong, part of the famous Armstrong family of professional wrestling, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. You know, there will come a day, and I have said this for the last few years, that I will release the production tapes. (laughs) You talk about shooters and jailers. Oh, no kidding. I will sit back and say this. I will put a jump drive in an envelope the day before I pass, and I will have it mailed and placed in a mayonnaise jar on Funkin' Wagnall's front porch at around 12 noon to be opened up later that day. (laughs) Yes, I just pulled a Karnak reference out of my backside. To which now I have to pull this one. Let's see. I hold in my hand the final envelope. The answers are... Two dollars and three cents. Purple Sensimil. And the current IRS tax code. Three, three things I can do without. Nope. Nice try, Sahib. The price of grass really, excuse me, the price of gas, some really good grass and something that's a unique pain in the ass. <laughs> And actually, that was a, the only original back in the day because I was a huge Karnak fan. I used to write my own stuff oh, like that. Yeah, I, loved I miss people like Johnny Carson, and I had such high hopes for Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. And then when Fallon st- – and this is something, kids, for everybody listening. Like I said, you are tuned into the Shooter's Gallery on this Thursday night, now Friday morning, officially in the Eastern Time Zone, Mountain and Pacific. Y'all are still in Thursday. We're now officially a little bit ahead of you. Again, we do that. 24 times a day, but <laughs> chronologically speaking, that's all. But we have a very unique perspective around here because we, even though we do maintain the hashtag hell damn ass shin, uh, language rules, one of us is going to get the last one in and I don't care who it is. I just threw that one out there one more time because I'm I, waiting for last call. There you go. I don't think anybody can top the Shinsuke Nakamura reference. I did an hour or two, but <laughs> <laughs> you get or actually, if you if you reverse it, you said my favorite alternative band is the Shin. Uh, their music is Shin. Oh, I kind of like the punk rock band, the Shinny Puppies. That reminds me of uh, one of my favorite lines from a movie called Wayne's World. Yeah, when Wayne and Garth show up to the club, and he's like, "Who you got on the bill tonight?" Let's see, we got the. Jeff Tomstones and the Shitty Beatles. He's like, the Shitty Beatles? Are they any good? They suck. Oh, so it's not just a clever name. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but Hashtag. It, it's okay. <laughs> that, that was uh, Wayne Campbell, portrayed by Mike Myers, not myself. So I'm just repeating what I heard. That's quite okay. We're good on that one. <laughs> We're late. <laughs> Even though it'll be played in the morning, I don't give a damn right now. Um, <laughs> one of these well, days. You know what? One, one more movie for it, by the way. Gremlins 2, the gentleman, uh, when all hell broke loose, if you remember the lesser known sequel to Gremlins, when, uh, and this plays into what we're talking about, Eddie, when the Gremlins took over the Trump Plaza or Trump yes. Tower or whatnot, and this guy had always had aspirations to be a, you know, a, a, can, a, excuse me, a news reporter, someone that, you know, delivered. Uh, news like the late Molly Schaefer now. Uh, so he was doing the vampire gig that aired at four o'clock in the morning. And the guy was like, man, you know, his friend was like, I don't understand, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, why you don't have higher ratings? He's like, let me tell you something, kid. People who are up at four o'clock in the morning ain't afraid of the wolf, man. Yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> Going so they're probably not offended by our verbiage this evening. There you go. Yeah, really. And like I said, folks, we have a unique take on it. It's like, we believe in we believe in being brutally honest, but at the same time, we all maintain a certain air of diplomacy. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and shift topics real quick because I've been wanting to ask you this one since you first called in. Is there any possible way in God's creation that Steph Curry can find a way to surprise us one more time? This very series between the Golden State Warriors and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I said it would go seven games. I stand by that fact. That's not just because Oklahoma City, you want to call it, stole game one. 
uh, came back down to earth. Some people say in game two, I don't think they came down to earth. They did what needed to be done. They stole home court just like they did with the San Antonio Spurs. Not that they lacked in game two, but if you're Golden State, that was one of those, there's that cliche again, as you say, a pivotal game five, a must win. Uh, history does not show kindly on a team that loses the first two games of the series. History really does not show kindly on a team that loses the first two games of a series in its own building. Right. So I think you saw the very best of Golden State last night. Now, uh, to me, pivotal is game three. Yeah. And I know that sounds so silly, but whoever goes up 2-1, because we've seen Durant and Westbrook take it in game one, we've seen Curry in game two. I mean, I mean, I could sit here and say a pivotal game three, two, one, it may still go seven, but now we've kind of seen some cards out on the tape. We know who can close. We know that these big stars are stepping up to the dance. I see a different Oklahoma City Thunder, and, well, can Curry surprise us? He damn well can, because in that Portland series, he didn't even start, and he scored 40 points off the bench with an NBA record 17 in overtime. Yeah. So, but going forward, I don't think a whole lot of people give this guy enough credit. Head coach for the Thunder won Billy Donovan. Under Scott Brooks, the Thunder always underachieved. Right. They never, I mean, they got to the NBA Finals one time and were whitewashed by the Miami Heat. Uh, under Scott Brooks, this Thunder team was not beating the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, the, an old Thunder team under Scott Brooks, when they got demolished in game one by that clinic the Spurs put on, they would have folded like a house of cards. Right. This team showed some resolve, it showed some metal, and it came out and did something that only two teams had done the entire NBA season, and that's when a game at Oracle Arena. So I love both teams. I do. I'm, I'm an unabashed Boston Celtics fan, but I love the association. I love when NBA playoff basketball is right, when you have a good matchup dynamic. And I think, you know, this is a fun thing. Steph Curry is the best player in this series. I think the Warriors are the best team. But uh, they've got Westbrook and Durant, and no other team in the NBA, and certainly no one left playing, or anyone across the board for that matter, can say we've got two of the six best players. But they're getting other people involved, like Enos Cantor, Stephen Adams, Dion Waiters, and that's a scary thought. I just can't wait to see how it unfolds. I've got to throw this one out there, and of course we're looking at the um, follow-up in the series, and you're right. And this one I've actually got to – I'm going to join you in the sentiment that Game 3 is going to be a huge hinge point because everybody likes to say pivotal Game 5, just like you reiterated a couple of minutes. I'm going to reiterate your comment. Everybody wants to wait till Game 5 to make it pivotal. Look, you've got to – every game counts. Every second counts. I don't care who says what. You cannot afford a dilly dally. You cannot afford to screw off. I mean, you've got to have everything in place. These are the playoffs. You are headed for a possible championship. Nothing is etched in stone, plain and simple. And I've got to sit back and I have to laugh to a little bit because, okay, I have not always been the biggest LeBron James fan. I've been very vocal about that. Um, ever since he, of course, won the championships down in Miami. It's like, okay, now you have room to talk. And notice he doesn't talk nearly as much as he did before the titles were won. But in case people have slept this little fact tonight, hmm, Cleveland Cavalier star LeBron James surpassed Shaquille O'Neal on the all-time playoff scoring list this Thursday night. James moved past his one-time teammate <laughs> into fourth place when he scored on a driving layup with 8.08 left in the third quarter of Game 2 in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Raptors. James entered the game needing 19 points to pass Shaquille's 5,250 postseason career points. He had 17, nine coming from the line by halftime. Now, also... Not only did he move up on that food chain, on that little chart, he also finished the night with his 15th career playoff triple-double and his first for this postseason, 23-11-11, and 11, 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. Um, going for the uh, Cavaliers' 108-89 win, he now has 5,255 career playoff points. Also, from there, he wasn't the high scorer of the night. Kyrie, Irving, Kyrie was the high scorer of the night. I've got to sit back and say, have we actually 
okay, you've got some sportscasters and some talk shows that are still, oh, LeBron. And you've got that many more that James has been somewhat flying a little bit under the radar, even on games when they play or nights when they play games. It just seems like it. all the talk has been on the West right now. All the talk has been about Golden State. And for a change, the Cavaliers aren't getting near. It's kind of like San Antonio. They're not getting near the press that they would have been this time last year doing the same damn thing. Shane? You're so right, Eddie. But I've got a reason, in my opinion, why that is. Uh, They're not playing the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're playing the Toronto Raptors. The joke has been the Eastern Conference is the East. And I'll give them this. Right now, the Cleveland Cavaliers under head coach Teron Lee, and make no mistake about it, it's hard when a team makes a, a coaching change in midseason. Right. They're playing better than anyone. They're playing better than the Thunder. They're playing better than the Warriors. Right now, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, LeBron James, that three-headed monster is impossible to stop. But that's my catch. They're playing the Raptors. They're not playing the same level of competition. They did this last year when they swept the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, and they succumbed to the Golden State Warriors. I have no doubt, and I asked Stan Grubb off air when you took a break, uh, you know, for the little trifecta powwow, I asked him, I said, hey, can you recall as an NBA fan a series that felt more over from the time before the, uh, the first jump ball ever occurred in game one because the Raptors, kudos to them, but, man, having to go seven games with the Indiana Pacers, then seven games with the Miami Heat, it's tough enough to beat Cleveland if the odds are fair. They've Come got on. a week and a half of rest. I mean, LeBron had time to take two vacations with Dwayne Wade down in South Beach if he wanted to. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I don't put it past him that that's going to come out after the season ended, like he and Bosch and Chris Paul all vacation down in Miami for six days, waiting their opponent. But I mean, I'm not. That's not a slide on Cleveland. I'll agree they're playing better than anybody right now. But you look at the competition. You got to look at the competition. Would they be playing this way against the Thunder or the Warriors? I think we'll certainly see it in the next series. And I look forward to that because some people really like to undercut Golden State. Well, you guys beat the Cavaliers without. Love and Irving with injury. Fine. I'll also remind you in the regular season, they blew their ass out yep. at Cleveland by like 37 points with yep. all healthy players involved. That was a statement game. No, that was so now the everybody's going to be healthy, and I want to see it. I, I, I mean, I don't want there to be any more excuses. But you know what? In LeBron James' defense, passing Shaquille O'Neal is a great accomplishment because Shaq was a heck of a school. I'll also say sometimes in his early career, Shaquille O'Neal played best of five series in the first round, but that's not LeBron James's fault. That's what the NBA went to, seven-game first-round series. So he's had more opportunity. But um, if they reach the finals, my head is off to LeBron James. I don't care how weak the Eastern Conference is overall, and it is compared to the West. If you reach six straight finals, uh, you're getting in Bill Russell territory, Holmes, and that's something nobody else has done in NBA history. That would be pretty darn cool for LeBron James to hang his hat on that. Now, I digress and say overall he's 2-4 and four, and one way out of Miracle 3 away from being 1-5. and five. But, uh, you know, i got to get my digs in on the guy just because. But I think it's going to be fun. I think if we get Cleveland and Golden State, and I say if, if we get those two, some people will say back in training camps in September, October, why even play the regular season because we knew that was what it was going to be. So be it. If we had to go through an entire season, which had some great moments, uh, and, you know, the Warriors set the all-time single-season win record, I feel like this would be the two best teams. If we get Cleveland at full strength, Golden State at full strength, our NBA Finals rematch, which I know Eddie is an old-time fan, also knows that's always a big sale because you bring oh, yeah. casual fans now during these conference finals, during the NBA Finals. They might know LeBron. They might know Seth Curry. But they're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, well, you saw these two teams last year. So anytime you get a repeat, which just doesn't happen anymore, you know, in the NBA, we don't see both teams make it to the finals back to back years. And with everybody healthy, that should be a fun, fun series. Oh, hell yes, it should be. And shifting over real quick, you know the fact that what we are up against in the great state of North Carolina this weekend, right? Enlighten me. All star race. Hmm. 
<clears throat> has it snuck up on us? Yes. Wow. We are at Lowe's Motor Speedway for the All-Star. Well, you're right. I'm sitting here looking at the third week of May. That's when it rolls around because yep. Memorial Day is the Coca-Cola 600. <laughs> yep. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series will head to Charlotte Motor Speedway this week, while the NASCAR Xfinity Series takes the week off. For those, real quick, let's run it down, and it's going to be a packed day. And actually, it starts before NASCAR.com actually says, because there's some other stuff that's going to be done on um, Fox Sports 1. Keep your dial locked there, racing fans. Eastern time, I'll run them all, all times Eastern. 1230, Sprint Cup Series Showdown practice, or excuse me, final practice. They had some practice earlier today. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Sprint Cup Series All-Star Race Final Practice. Note the difference on those. If you are the, if you have not followed the All-Star format, we've got some subtle variations. 445, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Sprint All-Star Race Pit Road Speed Practice. That's gonna be fun to watch. Let's see if they get all the lug nuts on there this time, please. I think they'll just go, I think Helton ought to come back and say, just put them all on, tighten them up, quit cutting corners. I'm tired of hearing it. I don't want to hear this shin anymore. <clears throat> Sorry. 5.30 p.m. NASCAR Tr Camping World Truck Series Keystone Light Pole Qualifying on Fox Sports 1. Also, 7.15 p.m. Final, uh, let's see, the Sprint Cup Showdown. 20 laps, 20 laps, 10 laps on Fox Sports 1. Uh, from, there's also more qualifying for the showdown which is going to be a little bit earlier in the day. Of course, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the uh, the NC, the North Carolina Education Lottery 200, 134 laps, 201 miles for the Camping World Truck Series will be live on Fox Sports 1. And then, of course, on Saturday, you've got complete and total chaos. Yeah, right. Um, NASCAR, uh, 7.10 p.m. Eastern. You're going to miss it, and so am I. Oh. Damn it, damn it, damn it. DVR. <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, All-Star Race, 50-50 and 13 on Fox Sports 1. Why in the hell is this not on Fox? I have no idea. Why? Are, you've got some high-profile NASCAR events, like last week, last Sunday's race. It was on Fox Sports 1. My Fox affiliate down here in, in Alabama, in Central Alabama, Fox 6, was showing in for freaking Marshalls. I still don't get it. Do they underestimate the... Uh, is Fox trying to get out of the deal with NASCAR, in your opinion? I wonder. I mean, we've seen the NBA All-Star game be played on TNT, which is still baffling to me on cable network. I'm thankful that the Major League Baseball All-Star game is on Fox, has been for several years now, always been on network television, either CBS or NBC, uh, the NFL Pro Bowl, they can take it and leave it. It's still on, you know, network television. I am shocked that, you know, why put it on Fox Sports 1? Because I'm sitting here thinking Saturday night prime time, there's no Major League Baseball game. There's nothing else on uh, Fox's schedule. There's no original, you know, scripted or reality series programming that has to take precedent over that. I just, it baffles me. It's a way to... I think anytime you hear the word all-star game, all-star race, you're going to pick up some people that are casual followers. Yeah. Very true. I was going to go for the um, for the bottom of the hour break there, but I know we're starting to uh, go into a serious crunch time event, and you and I both have some things that we definitely need to get out there. Um, we covered quite a bit of it last night on the To Be Determined show. We're going to be doing a little bit more encapsulated version, wrestling fans. All the way across the board, southeastern U.S., you've got a couple of great destinations this coming Saturday night. Um, let's go ahead and turn it first to the Peach State of Georgia, a match that I wish I could be there for. In the main event, the finals of the quest to be the best championship challenge to determine a new Peach State Wrestling Alliance Heritage Champion. Shane, please do the honors. That will be the savior of pro wrestling, Jimmy Rave, as well as Tommy Too Much. And I'm going to read you verbatim my Facebook status from 823 Eastern Time yesterday evening. What began on March 5th with 
17 wrestlers having a chance in the quest to be the best tournament is now down to the final two. Jimmy Rave and Tommy Too Much. One man will walk away, the undisputed PWA Heritage Champion. And to do that, he will have to score a decision by pinfall and score a decision by submission. There will be no countouts, no disqualifications, no time limit, and every wrestler at PWA, including myself, is banned from interfering in the match or setting foot out of the locker room per one Mr. Bill Barons, the advisor to the Georgia Athletic Committee. He will see to it that we are fired, never set foot in a PWA ring again. The stage is set. We're less than 48 hours away. And the big question, who you got? I'm refusing to make a prediction on this one other than the fact, folks, if you want to see what is going to genuinely be an instant classic. If you're not able to make it to Carrollton, keep your eyes open on peach state wrestling com, And when this DVD becomes available, get the damn thing. Look, those who know me know that I work with Shane at PWA. I'm not going to be able to be there. I'm going to buy the damn DVD when it comes out. Yes, I'm willing to spend my money on this DVD because I think the match is going to be that damn good. I have faith in Jimmy Rave. I have faith in Tommy too much. I have faith in the fact that the technical expertise of Jimmy Rave is going to shine so beautifully. I have every bit of faith in the world that the mind of Tommy too much is going to be working over time to find a way to keep Jimmy Rave in check. And I know that Tommy too much has been working to build a repertoire. Too much is not known as a, as a submission wrestler. Rave is rave. Isn't always known as a power finish wrestler. Too much is. So you've got a very unique circumstance there. Which man will rise to the challenge to overcome and fortify their weak points in their game, which you really can't call them weak points, but it is true. It is a, it is an honest analogy. Which one will build the house that won't be blown down? Anything else you'd like to add to that? I just want to say this match, you and I are not as far as fans that have reached out to get tickets for this Saturday. I'm talking fans that haven't been since January, fans who haven't been since last year's anniversary show, people who haven't been since October 17th and AJ Steele and Calm Like a Bomb Pandora debuted. They see the magnitude and the importance of this match. You see two completely different dynamics. You see, I mean, I think any time you get down to a tournament finals, you want to see the best. And this is the quest to be the best. Two men, two different quests, completely different ends of the spectrum. Uh, and I will say this, front row ringside on the floor is sold out. Front row stage seating is sold out. Almost all of second row on the floor is sold out. But folks, if you're listening or you know someone, Reach us at PWA Fanbase at Yahoo.com. I'm going ahead early on this one, Eddie, for tickets. You can also check us out, PeachStateWrestlingAlliance.com, the official website. Peach State Wrestling Alliance is on Instagram, Facebook page, also on Twitter at The Real PWA. You can email me, Shane Knowles at gmail.com. I'd be happy to rehash any information, questions, concerns you may have. Tickets are $10 per adult. Children ages six and under get in free. And folks, uh, if you listened to To Be Determined last night, you heard me put over the PWA Heritage title. This is a straight shoot. I cannot think of a Heritage title match that has more importance in our almost eight year history than this one. People believe in Jimmy Ray, they know he's the real McCoy. Tommy too much. There's a small sample size that gets to Tommy too much. The rest of them think he can go to hell. But the fact of the matter is, he may be devious, he may be underhanded, but he's also lethal. I've been in the ring with Tommy too much. As Eddie uh, attested to, 
he will do anything to capture a victory. And he faces his strongest challenge in Jimmy Ray this Saturday. It's just got... It's just got the makeup of one of those legendary bouts. It really does. And I'm curious to see the execution that comes off in this thing, the stamina and the wherewithal, and it's going to be a battle of attrition. Because, see, we've also mentioned the fact that there is no time limit on this match, correct? That is correct. Uh, matter of fact, I spoke with Bill Darren's, uh on my lunch break today, and he said, you can tell the people, Great shoot. If that match starts around, we'll say nine nine thirty Eastern time. A lot of times, PWA events are done by ten ten fifteen. They said, "I don't care if it goes into the eleven o'clock hour, eleven thirty. We're gonna have it." And the fun part of the scenario, I hope you paid attention, folks, because, like I said, we've discussed it before, and this is our final run for the going into Saturday. The match can only be won by pinfall and submission you must doesn't be... that feel odd not saying the word or yes it does after pinfall <laughs> it does it does it damn well does but like i said pinfall and submission you must have one of each you can't go two oh it's got to be one and one this is gonna be cool i'm sorry mark out moment pop big time let's take it let's take a quick look down the rest of the lineup and i know i'm like i said for everybody listening to the different stations either br or on pwr dot um, pro wrestling radio dot net you heard us last night on to be determined and um, much more in full length but we're starting to move toward that bracket where the home run round definitely clicks in right about now so let's take um let's give a quick one on this one no limits title match came out of the previous outing kyle matthews challenging kevin blue Kevin Blue, the No Limits champion for seven months, facing three-time Georgia Wrestler of the Year, three-time Technical Wrestler of the Year, Kyle Matthews. I don't want to use Gravest Challenge or Survivor Series with Hulk Hogan and Undertaker, but Kevin Blue will face his stiffest, pun intended, no pun intended, challenge in the form of Kyle Matthews. Six-man tag team match. Shane Knowles? And hashtag trending now, Ace Haven and Charles Sanders taking on the backbone, Drew Adler and the B3's beautiful bald besties. Shane? Michael Stevens, Drew Adler, Zach Edwards. They have the tag team titles at Peach State in their faction. They have it in their grasp. They chose not to show up when they were advertised for May the 7th, claiming that money was uh, money needs were not met. I am bringing a purse from my personal bank, bb and I'll pay him whatever it takes. You get in the ring, and you do business like a man. Let's see. Sal Renaro taking on the ever-so-popular Fry Daddy. Sal Renaro and Fry Daddy. Wow. Uh, an opening round match in the quest to be the best title tournament back on March 5th. Both men with something to prove. Fry has not been seen at Peach State since that loss to Sal in the tournament. Sal Renato has lost back-to-back matches after not having his shoulders can at Peach State for over a year. Yeah. Who will come out of this with momentum? Romeo taking on Simon Sermon. Two former PWA Heritage champions in the form of Simon Sermon and the French sensation Romeo. Two men that seem, I mentioned this last night on To Be Determined, it's not a negative statement like you spoke of weaknesses earlier. It's just a fact. Two men that seem to be treading the water at Peach State. Neither one seems to be on a very good winning streak. Seems to be sort of in and out of the promotion. Whoever gains this victory, probably going to look like they're going to stick around. I and mean, this is not a loser lose town. None of that stipulation. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you lose this match, you're probably going to be overlooked by Bill Barons and the board going forward. Doors open 7 o'clock p.m. Bell time is set for 8 o'clock p.m. Um, you heard a reference to the tickets a minute ago. PWA fan base at yahoo.com. Oh, I couldn't resist. It's horribly bad of me to do sometimes. And, you know, it, no, it, I always love that cowboy yodel, the yahoo. See, you're outside. I'm not. <laughs> I can't do it in Studio One. Too many ears might wake up and I'll get crap for it. <laughs> I'll get kicked in the shins. 
that'd be some shin right there. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. And one of them will probably do sweet shin music. <laughs> did any of us get that one in play? None of us did. I thought okay. about it when we were talking about Mick Foley, uh, how the mandible claw became the love handle and he was doing love and sweet shin music. So kudos to you <laughs> bringing it in. But, uh, at Peach State, cameras will be rolling. As Eddie says, bring your signs, bring your banners, support who you want to. Boo and yay, just don't put a hands on talent. Or they will put their hands on you, not the other way around. Pierce Productions will be filming. I can't wait. Uh, and I, I got to share a story. This is so true. I mean, it's a straight shoot. I know when people say it's so true, they think the guy's lying. I had a gentleman named Alex Winter ordered. The DVD for May 21st today. Get the notification through PeachStateWrestlingAlliance.com. Alex has ordered DVDs over the last year on and off from Wheeler, Virginia. And I had to send him an email back. I said, Alex, I said, this card hasn't even taken place yet. And he said, I know, Mr. Knowles. It's just the card looks that good. Nice. Very nice. Also, this coming Saturday night, I want to go ahead and I'm going to I'm hand this one out. I'm going to do a full-scale version of this one. We didn't get a chance to do it Tuesday on Back to Basics because Back to Basics did not air. And we didn't have everything in place for the um, lineup on uh, GCW Radio. But the Stars of Global Championship Wrestling will be on the road this Saturday night in Rockford, Alabama. A city that I did not even know existed until this week. Ditto. I'm sorry. It's true. There's so many small towns in Alabama. I don't know them all. I'm not James Spann. I'm sorry. Did you know there's an actual town in Alabama called Burnt Corn, Alabama? No. I want a Google t-shirt. It. I'm dead serious. I want a damn t-shirt. <laughs> I'm surprised that there's actually an abundance of cities in the States called um, Turkey Town. You, you want to have some fun, start Googling some towns in the great state of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Well... I actually was quite impressed at the fact that I found a term for a road in Georgia called Hog River Road. Oh, oh yeah, Hog River Road. You have between Bremen and Carrollton. You do come up uh, Interstate I-20, get off X-11 in Bremen. Yeah, you will become quite acclimated mm-hmm. with Hog River Road. And, you know, talking about Kentucky, you know, Billy Jim, WWE Hall of Famer, always built from Mud Lick, Kentucky. And I said, that's got to be a joke, like Parks Unknown. It's a real city, a real town, excuse me. I've been through it. <laughs> but, no, to everybody down in Rockford, I, I mean no offense. What I'm, I honestly, genuinely mean no offense. I just, I'm an Alabama native, and there are a ton of cities that I did not know existed. And now I know where Rockford is, and I want to say hello to everybody listening in Rockford this evening because, trust me, we do appreciate it. A very special benefit show this Saturday night, May 21st in Rockford at the Rockford Event Center, 333 School Street in Rockford. I can say that in a couple more times if I really wanted to. Um, we're going to work to help raise money for Michelle Hunter in her fight with cancer. We've been asking the question, is he coming back too soon after what happened at the hands of Francisco Chiazzo at Battle Lines? We find out this Saturday night, has Clyde Braddock come back too soon? The person who will help you find the answer to that is Chris the Hype Henry. Chris Henry made a great debut outing at Global Championship Wrestling at Battle Lines, and this is going to be a solid match from start to finish. Of course, by the same token, I've also got to sit back and say, hey, Chris, you did such a great job. Congratulations. Your next opponent's Clyde Braddock. Ow. (laughs) This is going to (laughs) hurt. I have to modify the Samoa Joe chant. Clyde is going to kill you. Because he's on him. Clyde Braddock is a stiff competitor, buddy. And uh, had the opportunity to meet Chris Henry at the global event I attended back in February. Very humble guy. Trained by uh, Rock and Roll Express member Robert Gibson. The kid's got something. But, yeah, going in there with Clyde Braddock, I would not want to meet Chris the Hyde Henry this Saturday. Kid, get on your horse and don't slow down. If that horse starts to slow down, Jump underneath him, put him on your shoulders, and keep going because you're going to need that horse on Saturday night. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Chris Hendry. Great young competitor, honestly. Um, made a very good, solid first impression on me the first match I had a chance to call on him. 
And I honestly, I just hope he knows what he's getting into against Clyde Braddock. But, you know, hey, you sign the contracts, you cut the deals, you get ready to take the check. Just make sure you don't get checkmated that damn early. Leon the Bull Stresser, one half of the GCW Tag Team Champions, the World Tag Team Champions in play. This coming Saturday night in Rockford as he faces off against J.P. McGregor. Now, I will say this, J.P. McGregor, a lot of people recognize him from earlier runs in global championship wrestling. He has decided to adopt a new identity. Yes, this is true. But the but McGregor is very determined to show that the pain train, not the no pain train iceberg, but the pain train or the crazy pain train is back on the tracks and J.P. McGregor is at the helm. However, remember, you mess with the bull He's going to stampede. You thought I was going to say you'll get the horns, didn't you? Uh-uh. I didn't go for the I, re- I really did. I thought you were going to quote the late Paul Gleason in the breakfast club. Yeah. In this case, you mess with the horns. I mean, you mess with the bull. Damn it. He's going to stamp. <laughs> I'm going to lose my role as number one pitch man here. <laughs> shameless shin. There you go. <laughs> Instead of shameless shill. There you go. Uh, but no, seriously. This should be start to finish. McGregor has increased in size. But will the power game that McGregor has tried to incorporate into his new stratagem be enough to take down the bull? And also, to my knowledge, I do believe this is um, J.P. McGregor's second opportunity back inside the squared circle since returning to the world of pro wrestling. He'd been on hiatus for quite a while. Uh, been busting tail at um, Mad Dog's House of Pain as well as some other dojos to try to get back in ring shape. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens with that match. Like I said, they're not going to be doing a full ITV taping on this show, but you know that GCW cameras are going to be rolling. So we may have a web gem or two coming out of this show. It helps when you know the production team and you can actually drop nuggets like that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, this coming Saturday night, May 21, Cowboy Jack Gunn taking on the Mystic from San Monique Mudbone. I will tell you this point blank. Jack Gunn is on a rocket ride straight up that ladder. Guess what? That ladder's about to have an overhang. (laughs) Ever since January in the fatal four-way elimination match for the GCW Heavyweight Championship, Mudbone has had a chip on his shoulder the size of North Dakota. And I, that is the easy way for me to say it. What's going to happen this coming Saturday night? I will tell you this. Jack Gunn is going to step through those ropes. He is going to fight his heart out. And you will, I will guarantee you this for everybody who is in attendance. It's rare when I make a call on this one, but if you, if you listen to TBD, you heard me make this comment. But actually, I said it on GCW radio. My apologies. You will see one thing in particular if the positioning is right and Mudbone pulls it off the way only he can. Mudbone, now Shane, you were at a recent GCW event. Was Mudbone in ring um, for the part of the show that you were at? Yes, he uh, wrestled Spiral. Ah, that's right. I don't remember how that one came off because actually I think that he had um, both Spiral and Mudbone had developed minor injuries during the first part of that match. Nine times out of ten, I lay this one on the line very clearly without any fear of reprisals. There are three people in the world that I consider to have the absolute best spine buster in the industry. One, Arn Anderson. Two, Triple H when he's on top of his game. Number three, Mudbone. And I will put... Uh, Robert Roode straight into that mix because the double R spine buster is one of the best out there. But on any given night, the spine buster executed by Mudbone will send concussions throughout the event arena, plain and simple. This coming Saturday night, Jack Gunn, I hope, can get up and walk away from it if he gets hit with it. A match that has got some people talking, the dream chaser Dylan Cook, 2015 Rookie of the Year takes on Wild Thing Will Owens. First opportunity for Will Owens back under the banner of Global Championship Wrestling in quite a while. Looking forward to finding out what happens in this encounter when you have got someone once again coming off that rookie year, avoiding the sophomore jinx, 
but getting into the ring with one of the most untrustable SOBs you will ever step into the ring with. And I mean that in ring, nothing else. Don't read into, and don't try to read between the lines. There's nothing there. But you know, Will Owens will stop at nothing to win a match. And he is great at playing the mind games. And in the main event, all champions on this very special benefit show for Michelle Hunter. Mixed Tag Team Challenge match. The GCW Middleweight Champion, Mr. O'Hagan, and the GCW Ladies Champion, Veronica Fairchild, take on the combination of one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, and the NWA Women's World Champion, the Bullet Babe, Amber O'Neill Gallows. You got it, Bullet Club fans. South Alabama, Northwest Florida, head for Rockford. Get a chance to catch up with the Bullet Babe and all the stars of Global Championship Wrestling. Remember, cameras, this is not an official ITV taping. But there will be cameras rolling. So you may end up with a web gem out of this, but don't take the risk. Montgomery, come on down. Clanton, come on down. Opelika, all of the above. Baldwin County, come on up. You got two great events in two great cities on one solid night of professional wrestling action. For our friends, like I said, South Alabama, uh, Clanton on down, all the way across. Like I said, I'm still learning the geographic proximity for Rockford, so please bear with me. So I'm actually going to be in Clanton that night. Bell time is going to be 7 o'clock. <laughs> What? <laughs> you just got me. How you just brushed over that? Bell time is going to be seven o'clock p.m. Tickets are only ten dollars each, and they will be available at the door. Um, we will not be doing traditional uh, reserve seating for this event. It is first come, first serve at the door from that vantage point, from what I have been told. If, if anybody else has been told differently, I'm sorry. I'm just going off what the boss told me. So, like I said, for our friends. Eastern Alabama, on over, definitely. Saturday night, Carrollton, Georgia, check it out. For our friends over in eastern Mississippi, all through central and south Alabama, definitely check it out. Global Championship Wrestling in Rockford, Alabama. Got a whole bunch of things going on, and oh my God. Dude, can you believe three hours is flown by this fast? Always does. Mm-hmm. Um, taking a look real quick. And by the way, now we're officially at May 20th. Of course, I do want to go and throw this one out. Um, just for absolute, wow, it was better yesterday. <laughs> I was looking at the, I was listening to the different celebrity birthdays that are, um, actually kicking on, uh, May 20th. And so far, the one that I'm actually most like cool is Buster Rhymes turns 43 years of age today, Friday, May 20th. Cher turns 69. So, she has something else in common with her age. Ah, just found one. Pop, huge, big time. Tony Stewart, smoke, turns 44 years of age, and I really hope he can make the top 30 in owner points. That way he can make it to the chase if he gets if he qualifies. And, of course, uh, he left us back in 1997. James Stewart, one of the all-time greats. Just so much, so many people have left us this year already, and that's why I'm going to sit back and say something. I had the opportunity, um, let's go ahead and take it off in the last call, and I'm going to dive in on this one. And I'm not going to try to sound maudlin. I'm not going to go too far off an emotional side. I'm not going to get emo on you. Um, woke up this morning, and my brain and my heart clicked at the same time. And for some reason, the little thought came into my head. Let's go get in touch with dad and see if he wants to do breakfast. And my father, who normally calls me at nine o'clock in the morning, called me at eight fifty eight. And I said, you hungry? He said, yeah, kind of. I haven't been out of bed that long. He said, why? I said, you want breakfast? He said, Psh, you still asleep. You ain't get out of, get out of here for about another hour, are you? I said, actually, dad, I'm dressed and ready to get out the door. What do you want? He said, you want to have breakfast with me? I said, that's what I said, dad. <laughs> so he said, he said, I'm perfectly happy with Waffle House. If you want to go out and pick it up, get, grab me an all-star. So I did. 
had a chance to sit down. We talked. We laughed. We spoke, you know, coming off of Mother's Day and da-da-da-da-da and all the other stuff. But it's the little things in life. I'm going to sit back and say something that I'm a little bit overdue in saying. It doesn't matter if you take a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour. If you have someone close to you, family, friend, otherwise, spouse, same thing, otherwise. <clears throat> Just kidding, her. <laughs> I'll tell that story one day, too. But coming back into the serious side. Whether you take one minute or an hour, find a way to let someone in your inner circle, in your family, close friend, whatever you choose, whoever you choose, just let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know you care. And let them know it's more than just a passing thing. Pay it forward in that regard and take the initiative on it. Because believe it or not, it does work. Because it always comes back around in a good way. You know, you hear us talk about sports. You hear us talk about wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, football, baseball, basketball, NBA, hockey, all of the above. San Jose on a roll. And there's a human side to everything. And sometimes I completely don't acknowledge my human side on air. And mainly because I'm not totally human. I'm half angel, half demon. Leave me alone. And <laughs> more demon than anything else. But Gene Simmons stole my character, by the way. But the fact of the matter is, you can take a minute... And not only make your day a little bit better, but make somebody else's day a little bit better. Trust me, it works. And yeah, that is my side of the coin. Shane Knowles, last call. I'm going to wrap this up going back to professional wrestling. And I always like to share stories with people that I talk to, either fans or co-workers at my day job that are not in the business because I enjoy their fresh perspective because those of us that commentate, that referee, that work as in-ring talent, that do ring announcing, that promote, that advertise, sometimes we get a little jaded or sometimes we get a little too far in the forest to see the trees. This was a 12-year-old boy that attends Peach State Wrestling Alliance event with his family. They have two years. They love the promotion. God bless them. But I asked him, I always ask him when I see him, you know, uh, what you like in wrestling right now? And he said, Mr. Knowles, he said, something that bothers me is this past Monday when Michael Cole said, what an oddity to see Kevin Owens in Sami Zayn tag team. Now, trying to keep kayfabe, I said, well, yeah, that is odd because they're in a feud with each other and they don't like each other. And he said, yeah, he said, but it's an insult to anybody that's watched Ring of Honor and the independent circuit the last decade. And that just blew me away. A 12-year-old. So that got me to thinking. It's always something that I harp on, but even more so. I doubt anyone in WWE is listening to this. Hmm. But I want to get people on the bandwagon. This is not the 1980s anymore. Okay? You don't have to bring in Kurt Henning and repackage him as Mr. Perfect. You don't have to bring in Lex Luger and repackage him as the narcissist. And at the same time, this isn't 1985 anymore, where our only lines of communication are mailing letters to a fan club or a proof of purchase to Pro Wrestling Illustrated where we can receive a T-shirt and a Frisbee. We've made the world a whole lot smaller with text messaging, with Instagram, with Twitter, with Facebook, with MySpace, Zynga, Friendster, Snapchat. And YouTube, and Roku, and Google Chromecast, and Apple TV, WWE, it would behoove you to acknowledge past history. It didn't take place under your banner. So what? Is it really worth pulling the wool over some people's eyes, as opposed to the amount of people you make feel insulted and also feel lied to? When the proof is there on DVDs from other companies, it's there for free to watch streaming across any amount of platforms. And when you've got a 12-year-old 
I'm talking about a kid that's not in his teenage years has not hit puberty. He felt insulted by it. It's not just adults. Kids are sharp these days. My gosh, for everything I say about millennials, they have more avenues to learn and gain knowledge than Eddie and I ever did right. at a young age. And they see this. And, of course, you know, they're doing a really good job with A.J. Siles mentioning IWGP, bringing up history with the club. Great. You're on the right track with that. Because I felt if you brought in Styles and you brought in Gallows and Anderson and you pretended like these guys were three strangers, there'd be people more pissed off than I am or that 12-year-old boy. But here's the thing. Why not mention that Zane and Owens have a history back and forth, in and out of the ring on one side or the other over a decade? Hmm. Long-time partnerships and long-time views and other promotions certainly didn't hurt Roddy Piper or Hulk Hogan. Didn't hurt Randy Savage and Rick Flair. WCW didn't mind mention that these guys had a pass. For all the things they got wrong, I used to appreciate how they would say, these guys wrestled in WWF or up north or in other places, or any verbiage they would put it. I just think with the average wrestling fan, and especially those now with your own network, there's more archived history. And when you continue to dance around it and try to present something as new as if though it's 1985 and we're all clueless to anyone's background, it's personally insulting. And that goes from adults all the way to children. Amen. I just got corrected on something a minute ago. And actually, speaking of notable birthdays, good friend of the family, longtime friend and colleague, B.G. James turns 45 years of age today. Wow. You know, I'm a little bit older than him, but I'm still going to pull this one on him. And I'll probably get grief about this tomorrow. It's he, it's he, it's the dog that's OLD. OLD. You thought I was going to make another Shin reference? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I'm done with those for the night. I have officially taken that and put it up in the woodshed and I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the chainsaw out of the asylum match and I'm going to carve that SOB into three pieces that way it can't be put back together again. Hmm. Shane Knowles, shameless plug, sir. Well, useless trivia, which I do uh, throughout the week, Mondays and Tuesdays at Loco Mex Restaurant down in Jacksonville, Alabama. 7 o'clock on Monday is the early start time. Tuesday to 8 o'clock Central. Taco Tuesday. Also, brand new location. Wednesdays down in Piedmont, Alabama. Look forward to seeing some of our friends down from the Pro South area. Wednesdays at 7 o'clock Central time at the brand new Locos Cantinas. Flat screen TVs all around. It's going to be Taco Wednesday. I don't know many restaurants that do this. Everybody does Taco Tuesday with dollar tacos, either crunchy or soft shell, and dollar house beer. They get the opportunity on Wednesday to do this and come out and play trivia. Song requests are always welcome. You can reach me, Shane Knowles, at gmail.com. I am also on Twitter, which I do need to tweet as I realize I haven't done that uh, since Conan O'Brien probably was host of The Tonight Show. Wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, it hasn't been quite that long, but there hasn't been a whole lot in between. Um, in between, uh, but uh, look forward to seeing everyone this Saturday at Peach State Wrestling Alliance. There's a little something for everybody. No two acts are the same. And for our friends going over to uh, Rockford, it's for a good cause. Global Championship Wrestling. I know Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. I know several of the wrestlers on the card. For a little girl that has cancer, this is a very noble thing to do. So whether you go to Peach State, whether you go to GCW, I encourage you to check out Independent Wrestling. And I'll close with this. It's not a shameless plug. It's combined with the last call. When I say support Independent Wrestling, I want you to realize that 99%, dare I say it, 98 to 99% of the wrestlers you see in the WWE started in places like Peach State Wrestling Alliance. Yep. Like the global championship wrestling. Yep. If you ever get excited and you hear stories about, I saw Jeff Francoeur play for the Rome Braves at single A, or I saw, uh, you could throw anybody out there, Barry Bonds <clears throat> playing the Chattanooga uh, Lookouts. 
it's that same kind of feeling. When I say I can saw, when I knew it, when I can say that I saw someone in Columbus, Georgia, like AJ Styles take on Jason Cross in 2005, which I think is one of the best live matches I've ever seen, and now he's challenging for the WWE title. I encourage you to not wait until these guys get to WWE. Get acclimated with some of the best independent wrestling and wrestlers going today. I'm so proud of Xavier Woods. I knew him as Consequences Creed and his three appearances at Peach State. I'm proud of Apollo Crews. He wrestled as Uha Nation at PWA. And this is not just for PWA. Any number of people. Keith Slater. He was Skipper. The list goes on. People from around Georgia, Alabama, our neck of the woods that have made it to the mountain top. I think it's always a little bit cooler when you saw these guys on your level. Oh, and you yeah. never know when you go to a National Guard Armory, a community center, a VFW Fairgrounds location, a bingo parlor, anywhere that there is live independent professional wrestling. If it's done right, and you'll know it, you'll know when you go the presentation, the announcers, the ring, the PA, the wrestlers and gear, how they work the match, you'll know if it's right. You never know when you are seeing a star of tomorrow. Why not see them today? Amen. Sorry, for these last two, uh, it's to be determined and shooters gallery, I have really been getting some stuff <laughs> off the chest, brother, and I appreciate the platform you allow me to do so. Dude, dude. Your family on this. Verb. Thank you for uh, echoing that sentiment. I mean, I know Eddie probably even more so. And I'll give you a chance, you know, not I'll give you a chance. I'd like to give you a chance to touch on what I talked about because I know you are a big advocate of seeing independent wrestling live in person. See, therein lies the rub because I can't, I, I, I've always been anti the I word. Because I even say that WWE is an independent wrestling promotion. They just have a seven-figure budget. Sure. They have Their workers are independent contractors. Pretty much. Legit. I mean, and granted, at a more regional or localized level, we have a great crossover in talent. And which, now that WWE has NXT, they have a little crossover, too. But I'm, see, I'm going to take this in a different direction. I genuinely believe, and I've said this for years, DVDs are great and wonderful. Computer screens are awesome. Television, big screens, the bigger they are, the clearer everything is. And that's why you'll never see me get up close to a camera on a really big, on a high definition camera. Hell no. Not unless I'm wearing a mask. I have a face for radio. And a brick wall. But honestly, television is a great visual medium. Video is great. I got no problem with it. But the fact of the matter stands, to genuinely be able to take it all in. Gotta be there. You gotta be there. That's where the fun is. I love being able to pause, rewind, all of the above. But when you are there, when the moment transpires in person, if you're able to be there, it makes it that much more special. Always has. Always will. You know, there's times I want when... To say I, this. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I just want to touch on that. When you or I share stories, or mainly anyone else that's had a ball game, a boxing match, wrestling event... You know the stories people tell throughout the years? The ones that are off camera. Oh, yeah. The ones that, the ones that we all didn't see from a higher-definition screen at home or in a bar or in a pub or in a restaurant or in some friend's basement. It's the stuff like, well, I saw such and such beat this. Yeah, but dude, guess what happened after it went off the air? It's always the, hey, what? You have that story. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's pretty damn cool. Very true. Folks, want to remind everybody, BeyondRingside.com is the home for all things Beyond Ringside. Of course, don't forget ProWrestlingRadio.net. They are running staggered, similar yet staggered programming. So just because you hear something on one doesn't mean you're going to flip over and hear the exact same thing on the other one. Also, don't forget the Beyond Ringside radio app for Amazon, Android, and BlackBerry, as well as, of course, you can find replays 
God, so many different ways now. I, we're on places that I did not even know existed. Even in Rockford. I was waiting to see if I was going to get a register of any kind on that one. <laughs> but in all sincerity, and for me personally, com is my home. You've heard me make the reference on this on, on previous occasions. For as much as I am on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, um, Periscope, um, God, all the different social media outlets, my appearances or my overall contribution on most social media is being filtered back because long before there was MySpace, there was faststudylane.com. Before there was Facebook, I had my personal site. Before Twitter, before Instagram, before Periscope, before Snapchat, I had my home on the internet. I encourage you and I invite you to check it out. Um, in just a few hours, 9 p.m. Central Time, Friday night, I will be back with Buffalo Wild Wings and Alabaster, uh, one of the longest running weekly karaoke shows in central Alabama. I take a lot of pride and I have, a, it is a tremendous honor that they put up with me and I so thank them for it. Um, if you like to sing, if you know someone who does, or if you're just looking for a good place to go chill out and unwind for a little while, drop on and say hi. The Probst Promenade, um, it used to be Colonial. Now it's Probes Promenade Shopping Center, Buffalo Wild Wings, 9 p.m. Drop by, say hi. Folks, thank you for tuning in this evening to the sensationalistic, superlatively slamming stereophonic shindig. None of us touched that word, and I just remembered it. I had to get that one in, and I'm going to burn in hell later. (laughs) <laughs> thank you for joining us tonight we hope you've enjoyed the ride on this ex- on the full scale edition of the shooters gallery um, remember of course keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com and all of our social media outlets as far as upcoming show information and be sure to check out the media page at beyondringside.com and feel free to check out youtube.com slash beyondringside uh, some of the video versions are going up there as well as well as daily motion and occasionally facebook video let's take it home Four, Stan Grubb, who is four tag team partner Shane Knowles. Everybody's working for the weekend. Some of us are working this weekend, so turn me loose. I'm ready. Thank you, Mike Reno. Hey, my phone's ringing. No, it's, I should not be getting this call. I should be making that call because I should be calling Baton Rouge. And in seven hours, tickets for Garth Brooks at Yankee Stadium go on sale. And I'm going to fight like hell to see if I can get a couple of tickets to that show. I will go to New York for this. I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying thank you for going beyond ringside. Thank you for joining us along for the ride right here on the Shooters Gallery. Till next time, thank you again. Bye for now.